This is my father's motorhome uh, Bursner travel van. So you can see we've got a Dometic cam on the back. He's not in particularly impressed with it. Uh, so we're going to get that replaced and put on a twin lens camera. As you can see, I might have to give the back of the van a little bit of a wash down because it's not looking too great at the moment. Now the uh, motorhome's are nice and clean. I'll start by removing this camera and getting the new camera in its place. Now on the travel van bursters at least, uh, they seem to have, I presume this is where it is, I'm gonna find out in a second, but they have four screws. Uh, they're hidden behind little stickers uh, that look like wood, uh, but they just peel off. So it's just normal sort of crosshead screws. So I'm presuming if I take these four screws out, that little wood panel comes off and hopefully gives me access to where the connectors are. We'll see in a second. Success. I recognise this cable anywhere. So this uh, this grey cable is the Dometic Waco cable. So this is the one that our adapter will plug into, and it will go to the to the camera supply, uh, which presently is going out here by the looks of things. So we'll get this all sorted. This is the current camera that we're replacing, that Dometic camera. It's a bit of a cloudy day outside. You just can't really sort of, it's not very clear. It's not as clear as we normally like to see on a reversing camera. We get a lot of people sort of phone up complaining about it and wanting to change, uh, you know, upgrade their camera. Um, and they always seem happy when they do. So, but we're obviously going to put it directly onto a, a mirror monitor screen instead of onto here. Um, but yeah, you can sort of see why my father wasn't too impressed with, with this camera and why we want to change, as well as obviously having a rear view, which makes the camera system useful 100% of the time instead of just the one or two percent of your journey that you're reversing. So. What I'll do is I'll take this head unit out and access the Dometic cable, hopefully. So on this it's a Pioneer AVIC EVO1 T2C. And I found, well I haven't taken it off yet, but I find um, you have to sort of release it from the bottom. But uh, I found, I was trying to prise it up from the bottom, but actually I had to get between the screen um, and the plastic, I had to basically come from above with a little uh, a little tool, and that helped take it off its catch. Uh, so if you have the same model, look how dusty that is. Uh, if you have the same model, uh, that's the secret to, to getting it off. All right, so I managed to get the fascia plate off. I literally just peeled it backwards after I got released the bottom section. Uh, it looks like there's four Allen key screws by the looks of it. Um, I'll have a little try of my tools and uh, get those taken out. Yeah, it was a it was a three millimeter Allen screw. So I'm just going to take these four screws out. Success. I've managed to find the other end of the. Uh, Waco Dometic cable 
um, it goes into this adapter piece uh, which then feeds across to this uh, rear view camera input just with a normal phono cable uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our adapter on this side um, and obviously the other adapter will be on, on the rear we get to use this cable um, for carrying one or two signals obviously we're we're using two signals on our twin lens so before I start anything I've connected up our adapter cables it's the adapter cable that goes into two outputs um, and I'll just quickly run the twin lens out the, the sunroof and then we use one of our lighter plugs just to go into the socket on the monitor um, and that's just powering up the monitor so I can see we've got a picture uh, so now I can move to the next stage and getting all the cabling hidden and permanently hardwired now because this, this adapter because we're converting a burst now that's already got an adapter straight into the head unit it's got a red and black lead coming off. Now I know which pi two pins to test on here, but I know that it's connected up and it's giving 12 volts when the ignition's on. And I know it's uh, there's no power getting to it when the engine goes off. So I'm actually gonna use this uh, as my power source. So I've already popped the uh, clip on mirror monitor up. I've ran the cable along the headlining down uh, side pillars um, and down behind and back in uh, behind where the head unit was. Uh, this is the, the power uh, for the mirror monitor. Uh, this is a green trigger wire for reverse but we don't like connecting that especially for twin lens. Um, it's okay for single cameras but not for twin lens uh, just because it's nice to have full control when you swap over. Uh, so the only two cables we need to connect up is obviously the red and the black. Um, so it comes with your standard wiring. So I'm going to pop this on and just so it doesn't separate I'm just going to pop a bit of tape around it. Just a bit of ins insulation tape. And because we don't need a massive amount, and because this is already this version of a mirror monitor has already got a, a free amp fuse built in, I'm just going to cut this down to size, just because uh, it's obviously a little bit crowded in the back here anyway. I don't want to add more wire than, than is necessary. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to I've pre-cut a, a couple of strips, about two inches each, of adhesive lined heat shrink. We'll just pop this over the, the red and black lead just so I can cover the joint uh, at the end. And then next we'll be soldering it onto uh, down here there's a a red and black lead that I've already confirmed comes on and off with the ignition. Um, so I'm going to basically be soldering those two together and we should have a, a nice ignition based power feed then. Tricky in here to, to reach.
I'll just cut because I've just forgotten my solder. So I'll be back in a second. Right, I've just got my solder. Um, I prefer soldering the crimping. Now you slide the heat shrink over the joint. Because I didn't have much space, I, I didn't uh, offset the two connections, but if you had loads of space, you, you probably would. Well, I've managed to free this wire up a bit, so I thought I might end up getting uh, a bit of unnecessary melting of other parts. So uh, heat gun's warmed up a little bit already. I'm keeping the heat a little bit low just because we're working in a, an environment where there's lots of plastics that can melt. squeeze. Basically the adhesive inside will stop those moving about so that you've not got to worry about that sort of getting disconnected and moving and so that's all we are. The wiring harness all powered up now. Right, now the moment of truth. Yep, we've got a picture. Now, I've got the camera just resting on the roof, uh, so I haven't placed it properly on the back wall yet. Uh, but at least we've got a picture coming out of it, which I'm happy about. I suddenly had a thought. I was just put everything away, and I noticed when you go into reverse, Obviously the, um, the head unit was just giving an empty screen and I thought oh, I've got to take it out to, to put a power supply or, or take the power supply off the reverse light feed. But I thought why not just have the wide angle camera down here and still keeping the narrow angle camera so you've essentially got two views at once. You might as well make use of your existing monitor. It gives, well, I'd like to say double the safety, but it's definitely more safe to have two cameras and one camera at once, I'm sure. So I'm gonna, all I had to do was pop the um, a little cab 0020 adapter um, onto the cable. I didn't even need to provide the power to it, so the power supply at the moment is empty. I will pop a little bit of insulation tape just in case, you never know if there's a loose wire. Um, and because they're sharing the same power, there's a possibility that, well, it should be that centre pin has actually got a positive supply going to it. So I'm just going to wrap that round with insulation tape just for safety. And then I'm going to put that all back together and again, and uh, away we go. Kind of running out of time today to mount the camera, so I'm going to do that in the morning. I've, uh, Kept on forgetting tools that I had to go and pick up from work, um, which kind of wasted a lot of the day. Uh, but I'm sure my father's going to be happy. At the moment, the camera's not mounted. It's literally just uh, up on the roof, just going through the, the sky hatch. Uh, but um, I will fix it properly to the rear wall and adjust it all up. And that's going to give us quite a nice performance, I think. I'm very happy with it, and hopefully my father is as well. Another day 
another dollar or a pound. Uh, well, I'm up. So I've got to remove this old camera. It looks like it's got a couple of Phillips screw holes. Um, looks like there's a, a cable grommet uh, to go in. So I'm going to take all this off. Hopefully it's not been sicker flexed up too much. Uh, otherwise I'll have to sort of probably cut it slightly, the, the old sort of flex away. Uh, and then I'll get this camera removed. Uh, managed to get the bracket off, after removing its two screws. Uh, just going to release it from the back because there's a bit of silicon uh, holding it in the, the hole. Uh, so I'll get that removed um, and then we'll move to the next step. Right, managed to pull all the gunk out and get the cable connector out of the original hole. Um, so I should be a, hopefully using that hole to bring the new cables in and then I'll just add a bunch of silicon adhesive around it. Well, so this is the new camera for twin lens. Now as luck would have it, the centre hole and the, the two screw holes actually line up pretty much perfectly. Um, so what I'm going to do, a bit of a mess as it, it came off, <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this connected up. I was planning on silicon adhesing up with Sikaflex 522, but I'm going to put a bit of sealant into the original two screw holes um, and basically make use of those. They're already there, um, so why not? Um, and then I'll obviously put a bunch of sealants in uh, where the, the cable entry point is. And uh, that should be a nice fix. Right, so this is the silicon adhesive we normally recommend, both for if you're fixing the camera up uh, by itself or whether you're, um, you're basically sealing up the gap afterwards. Um, so it used to be called Sikaflex 512, but I think they changed the recipe, so they had to change the number. Probably haven't got a sharp blade in today. So first of all, I'm going to uh, fill up those those holes that we had, the original screw holes. Just so when you, you screw it back up silicon will go in and stop water running down it. Uh, and then I'll get the camera and uh, get that screwed in. Right, so the camera will come built but we have to take it apart. And it comes with a little allen key. Also comes with a, a bunch of instructions um, telling you how to do it, how to best fix it, and how to get the best angle. It also gives you some warnings about keeping the glass clean because the worst thing is if you go and put your thumbprint against it at night time you'll end up getting a bit of a whiteout where it's reflecting off all the oils that you've just sort of put on. Uh, so try not to sort of put fingerprints on the glass as you're fitting. Um, so I'll take off, I'll take the hood off first.
If ever you forget which way round the cameras are, uh, inside uh, you'll see a little blue um, sort of infrared sensor, light sensor. Uh, that's always at the bottom. Uh, so if you see it at the top, you've got it round the wrong way. Uh, this is actually one of our old cameras that we used to use for, for photos and uh, display purposes. It's getting a, another lease of life. And the other thing is, these uh, cab bigger cables pop off. So you just have to feed through these two small 8mm connectors. Uh, so it should, I don't think I'll be using these rubber grommets um, just because of we're not putting two holes in. Um, so I'll just uh, feed these two through the original hole uh, and then just add a, a whole bunch of that sort of Sikaflex sealant uh, to plug the gap. Slight change of plan because the original screw holes are quite fat because the original screw was very chunky. These grooves are a little bit skinny. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, originally I planned uh, to sick flex it all up anyway. That was my preferred method. Uh, so all we're going to do is apply some of this sick flex. I actually ordered the wrong colour. I didn't realise until, until I came to use it. It's, I think they call it steel grey or something similar. Uh, I'd have preferred white. Um, so you just get a good amount there. It's always a little bit of a messy job using things like Sikaplex, uh, but we'll do our best. So I'm just going to push down. I'm going to remove any excess with a bit of a moist cloth. Um, just to make it tidy, um, but that will hold it nice and sturdy. I hate silicon adhesive, but that should uh, should stick on. So I'm going to let it dry for a bit, or cure, and then when it's a bit stronger hold, I'll add the cameras back on, and then I'll feed the wires through and then give another load of sealant uh, through, the, through those holes, uh, make sure there's no chance of any water coming through. It's too nice a day to sit at home watching the silicon adhesive dry. So we've gone out for a walk in Pegwell Bay. Gonna pick some blackberries. It's been a few hours, I'm getting impatient, but it's pretty sturdy already. It'll take about a day to fully harden. But I've uh, separated out the cameras, uh, about sort of four holes adjustment. I'll try that first, and obviously if I need to, I'll uh, move it one place. Uh, but literally just pop those in. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll quickly go and have a look on the monitor. Uh, and see what it looks like and if I'm happy I'll leave I'll leave it like that put the sun hood on um, and tighten the screws up right, I've placed the the hood and adjusted uh, the cams so it should be pretty much spot on Got it uh, showing on the monitors at the moment. So obviously the, the road's on a hill, so when you're driving along it'll obviously look more normal. And that's the parking camera. So looking down. So that's all in the shadow at the moment, there's no real sun out. That's off in the distance somewhere. Well, a lovely picture, very happy.
and I'm sure my dad will be very happy too. But all of these products are obviously from us at Revcam UK. Uh, this is the Sony CCD. So if we weren't reusing the original cable, that Waco Dometic cable, we would have put the Sony AHD on, uh, which is even higher resolution and even higher dynamic range. Uh, but because we wanted to use that uh, that cable, the cable can't support two lots of 1080p signals. Uh, um, but I think you'll agree, do you need more than that? I mean, that's as detailed as we need, really, to be able to tell whether it's safe to pull out or who's following us. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you want to, check out our products. Uh, basically, um, Google rever Reversing Cameras UK Limited or Revcam UK, and uh, you'll find us. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.